Hello, I'm Dr. Sundari Nace, Sonoma County's Health Officer. And I'm here to share the latest updates on coronavirus in Sonoma County. As of today, May 1st, there are 244 confirmed cases, uh, up 12 cases in the last 24 hours. 114 of these cases are active, 128 have recovered, and we still have the two deaths that have been reported. Um, we have performed 5,850 tests to date, up 160 tests in the last 24 hours. Today, I'd like to talk about the new health order that I signed to continue sheltering in place. It will supersede the previous order and become effective at 12.01 a.m. on May 4th. This loosening of restrictions in our new shelter in place order is possible because of the significant interruption of community transmission of the virus, uh, meaning that the early aggressive measures that we took uh, to put shelter in place into effect and all of you complying with shelter in place really uh, helped us flatten the curve. We really appreciate everybody's compliance with this order. We could not have achieved this kind of success in limiting transmission and numbers of cases without your cooperation with staying at home. Sheltering place has worked now to save lives, minimize um, the number of cases, hospitalizations, and has allowed us to maintain our healthcare system capacity. So a little bit more about the order today. Like the governor's order, our order does not have a specific end date. Um, we did this specifically because we want to be able to respond and make modifications as necessary, either loosening or tightening restrictions. And uh, we will do this based on our data and as state orders might change rapidly as well. So this order does reduce some of our shelter in place restrictions in a number of really important employment areas including construction, landscaping services, nurseries, and car and bicycle sales. As you know, we also had the uh, modification to the parks order with the soft reopening. And I hear that everybody has been very compliant and that things are going well with the parks. Now this new order uh, does allow certain businesses to resume operations. I do not expect to permit private or public mass gatherings in the near future, however. I will be continuing to assess whether mass gatherings are appropriate based upon our infection rate and the data related to the state's critical reopening indicators that we've discussed on this live stream before. So what does the order specifically do? The order eases restrictions on construction businesses, allowing all new construction and all construction work on unoccupied structures. It allows for real estate rental viewing if there's strict compliance with sector-specific social distancing and hygiene requirements. Um, it does allow for essential outdoor businesses where transmission risk is lower. This would include arborists, landscaping, gardening, pool maintenance, plant nurseries, and environmental site remediation services. The order also clarifies that florists are considered agricultural and that their retail sales can occur via curbside delivery or shipping. Golfing is also allowed as a recreational outdoor activity and players, golf courses and driving ranges are subject to very strict golf safety requirements which will be enforced. Automobile dealerships and bicycle shops can operate for retail sales. However, they'll also need to maintain that required social or physical distancing protocols for the staff and for the customers. The order's provision regarding minimum basic operations allowed for non-essential businesses remains unchanged at this time. Those non-essential businesses may continue to sell existing inventory for delivery or shipping, but not for curbside pickup. So today, what are our community questions? Why prolong the shelter in place order when we see other parts of the country opening up and relying on herd immunity to protect their community members? When most of a population is immune to an infectious disease, this provides indirect protection, and that's what we call herd immunity, also called herd protection, to those who are not immune to the disease. For example, if 80% of a population is immune to a virus, four out of five people who encounter someone with a disease are immune, so they won't get sick and they won't spread the disease any further. In this way, the spread of that infectious disease is kept under control. Depending on how contagious an infection is, 
usually 70 to 90 percent of the population needs immunity to achieve herd immunity and at least 60 percent and that's going to take a very long time currently there's no natural protection because it's a novel coronavirus and human beings have never seen this virus so the potential consequences right now of exposing the entire population to an infection is a risk that we in public health and you as our community, I'm sure, are not willing to take without extreme caution and parameters in place to reduce the morbidity and mortality, especially among those who are more exposed, such as our healthcare workers and first responders, and those, as we've always talked about, that are more vulnerable and that could have bad outcomes with infection, such as people over 65 and those with underlying health conditions, such as diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, cancer survivors, immunosuppressed people. So let us just uh, stay on top of the science and data and continue to learn more about COVID-19 each passing day. And we'll continue to ethically take steps to implement the necessary adaptation that will allow us to open the community in a gradual and careful way. So thank you very much. Stay healthy, be safe, and we will talk again on Monday.